Alright. Anyway, guys, it is turning into a fine Easter Sunday and the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, here on Easter Sunday, April 9th, 2023, and I just want to do a quick uh, video to advertise that uh, <clears throat> my buddy Elliot Jacobson from uh, <clears throat> Climate Casino and I, we're going to be doing another show today, but uh, I'm sure you're sick and tired of listening to uh, Elliot and I sitting around talking about the uh, collapse of a planet, so I am thrilled to say, and I just want to advertise uh, in case you miss it on a later on tonight that uh, Elliot and I will be interviewing this uh, doomer named Michael Campy over here from medium.com. Uh, Michael Campy, uh, I really don't know much about this man. I'm really looking forward to this interview. Uh, that's This is C-A-M-P-I if you're not familiar with him and over there in the uh, Doomer porn capital of the world, medium.com. So just to whet your appetite, I just kind of threw a dart uh, to give you an idea of what our conversation might sound like tonight. <clears throat> from uh, This is from three days ago. Michael Campy, I monger fear. Take it away, Mikey, Michael Campy. I guess the anti-doomers need someone to hold their hands and comfort them with statements like, keep your fingers crossed behind your back when you say these things. It will all be okay. We just have to believe. We can <coughs> change this. <coughs> we have the power. We just have to get serious. I guess doomers need to pull back a little too, kind of like what Extinction Rebellion did in the UK, because we are being harsh and making people wail and gnash their teeth. Tell them not to think too much about the 43,000 people that died due to the drought in Somalia. Tell them not to think about the devastating toxin that is bubbling up from the permafrost. Tell them not to think about the 20 million fish that died in the Darling Baca River. Because, of course, we just have to buckle down and get to work. We can do this. <coughs> Most of the people who read what I write are already on board, so I don't have to worry about them getting all weepy. Seriously, though, y'all have to get over this we can fix it shit. It's not that bad once you get over the initial hurdle of having everything you believe crushed beneath the iron boot of reality. This is not a broken leg on your old wooden chair sort of situation. That you can fix. This is an entire planet being destroyed by the collective madness of our existence over the last 200 years. I might say 10,000 years, Michael, but we can talk about that tonight. <clears throat> if it, you know, meaning the situation of the entire planet being destroyed, if it needs to be a little smaller in order to be understandable, try this. For the last 20 to 40 years, you did nothing to take care of yourself. You ate bad food, you never exercised, you spent way 
too much time sitting, you gained a lot of extra weight, your blood pressure went up, you developed a heart condition, you completely let yourself go. Now you want to make up for all of that abuse by taking a sit and be fit class three times per week. Any type of, quote, solution that you come up with is kind of like the sit and be fit class. It is never going to help. Things that are not going to happen. Right, this is seven things that are not going to happen. One, there is going to be no mass awakening leading to a happy, peaceful, prosperous future. Number two, your friend that you read your copy of, that you let read your copy of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, will not return it. Things will not get magically better because we start a movement. Your favorite coffee shop will not have the pastry you like after 9 a.m. on Sunday. Technology will not, and this cannot be stressed enough, save us. People in positions of power will not see the error of their ways and act in a compassionate, caring fashion. Your neighbor will not invite you over to try the pie they made from the cup of sugar they borrowed yesterday. Okay, that is seven things never going to happen. <clears throat> Back to what might happen. It is senseless and delusional to think of saving the planet. This is not to say you shouldn't, but you are bringing a knife to a gunfight if you are planning on changing anything. I want to see people fight because it's the right thing to do, not because they actually think they can win. Winning is an antiquated concept based on some sort of strange obsession with competition. Planning to win the war against climate change uh -huh, is a zero-sum game, only in this game there will never be any winners. Everybody loses, only some will not lose as quickly. <clears throat> I have discussed acceptance before. It is multifaceted and it never means giving up on what you are doing because there is no huh, because there is no huh, because there is no huh, the, uh, 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 hope of change. It means fighting even harder in spite of there being no way to win. One of the hardest things about this is telling young people that they are going to suffer and die. It is disingenuous to pretend like you are going to help them save the future. It's like telling them that Santa Claus is real. How do you think they're going to feel when they find out, as they will, that all the talk about saving the planet was a lie. It is my belief that young people are a lot more adaptable and capable than we give them credit for. I also believe that like Santa Claus, it is more about us and our feelings and ideas than it is about them. Don't you think that maybe it's time to stop pretending? Don't you think that young people are deserving of the truth?
There you go. Amen, Brother Michael Campy. So, uh, we will uh, be bringing Michael Campy on tonight. I should have this posted before I go to bed uh, tonight, the interview. And uh, uh, Elliot will also be posting it on his own fine YouTube channel, uh, Climate Casino. But right now, I got to get out there, finish packing my gas sucking truck, and the little dog is getting a BATH. You know, you got to get to BATH. You're a dirty little dog, and it's time for a BATH. We can't take you to visit your Auntie Ariel without a BATH. So, anyway. I will be on the road, the little dog and I will be on the road to Hotlanta, GA tomorrow. Uh, probably, there might not be a chronicle of the collapse. I don't know what my schedule is going to look like. Heading back to New York, baby. Anyway, come back and join us for our conversation with Michael Campy while you still can. Bye, guys.